the start to be honest because I was going through a Facebook page on Elijah Vu and to be honest that is where I should look daily because you get so much information off that so much information off the Facebook pages and uh where I've been struggling to get information, like the sheet, the paperwork, it's on them pages, and I forget about that. I'd just like to say hello to everyone. If you haven't already, please give this video a like. It is for the children it's to get this video pushed out more, so more people get to see this more people get to hear about these children that are missing and need to come home so if you could please give me a like share this video comment if you want twitter or if you want to come and follow me on youtube please do so you can comment on the lives and um If you really like it, subscribe so you can be kept updated with the videos automatically. So, firstly, Elijah Vu has now been missing three weeks, I believe now. Next week we'll be going into the fourth week. So, it's not looking good. It's not. And there's so much information on this page. Right? Um, come on, I'll come out of this. Right? So much information on that Facebook page. It's unbelievable. Right? If you want to follow me on Facebook, I'll share it with you now. Please do so. I only started it last night. And this is just for crime and justice. Nothing personal on this page. 
hát có người ta thay cho anh chị ngon à ở bên mặt gì sạch thua Well, if I eat my personal pie, that's my personal pie, that's for my family. Not so in my door, I'm a grandkid. If they win like the opening of Jesus Christ book. And my friends dying in Birmingham. And my friends in Dundee. Well, they were late. Right? So, this is my page. If you want to come and follow me on there, please do so. I do update. Not just this case I have, I have done and all the cases I've been dealing with I am on there if any new updates come up I well I can do a live just on one bit of information I'll post it on my Facebook or my Twitter account so anyway let's go here and let's okay. yeah. Um, what am I going for? Facebook. Yeah. Ah, you know, it's a very shit. Right? Now, this is the Elijah Boo discussion. Page. and it has some really good information on it yeah right, because a lot of people are now trying to get searches up themselves in different areas but i come across one post and it shows a picture of like some marshy land by this river and they posted it on there and people was going I'd, if i was here i'd go on a kayak but don't get out the kayak because it'd be like a, a sucky sort of thing and this one bloke was going my that's my back garden there it's private property i'm thinking but we're looking for any signs of a little boy surely you you wouldn't mind someone just coming around by that river bit there I'm not actually coming onto the land but and i thought come on this is a little boy we're trying to find right right if i go into this the recent media right right now this is one text more of a text is right and it's on the second the 18th 2024 4 36 am yes he texted me he did fear me but he didn't respect me now i'm making him respect me right the second and 19th 24 between 2 pm and 9 pm Law enforcement requested any camera footage of a 1997 age four during the sun. And I'm wondering if something happened there on this guy. Right? Because then on the 19th, on the 20th, he goes missing. Right. Now we've been through all this, we've been, oh no, this is the new charge. This is one of the new charges against her. I will show you the video of the court proceedings. Right. So this is a new charge. Charge, neglect of a chronic neglect of a child. Right. The both named defendants on or between February 12, 2024, February 18, 2024, 
In the city, two rivers manifest at times these concerns as a part to a crime, being a person responsible for the welfare. Right? We all know this thing. I think I know it backwards. But I think it's also she's got other uh, charges against her. Right? So she's not getting out. Right. There was Facebook messaging between Katrina Bell and Jesse Bang. 2.35 a.m. Katrina asked Jesse, is there a way to shut off your headphones completely? Hmm. Jesse responds, no can not to sit off completely should be shut off completely. And Katrina messages, I can't find victim child to victim child to that birth to 2017. Cell phone, but a cop just passed by, so I want to make sure she's good. Victim child two is a child for which Katrina Barra is parents of. Katrina Barra indicated victim two is autistic to law enforcement. Katrina message, let me find her phone quick. Let, her phone, let me find her, let me find her phone quick, because I need to have some type of sign for her. Jesse message, probably think someone is warming up. Katrina responded, not worth the risk. I'll leave it off for a bit, then turn on again. Jesse said, okay. She messaged, she said, she, the phone. She found the phone, but it was dead. She messaged, she would leave her phone in the car. She questions whether to leave her phone on, but muted around 2.40 a.m. She also messaged, it should stay warm for a bit, warm for a bit while. Right, hold on. She also messaged, it should stay warm for a bit, right? I'm losing my track here. Right. Uh, he responded, Joe, yeah, well, at approximately 3.13 a.m., a photograph was taken and the GPS indicates she was at 3918 Missicott Drive, two rivers. The photograph shows victim one, victim child one, laying down on a bed. Victim child one had a blindfold over his eyes. Appears to have bruising on his jawline and neck on the left side, as well as bruising on his upper left arm. Katrina Barrow confirmed that she took the picture and later deleted it around 4.12 a.m. Katrina Barrow's phone leaves two rivers at 4.30 a.m. on February the 14th, 2024. Christ's sake, what did that poor child go through? What did he go through? This is horrendous. Hi, MG. I'm just going to check on. I heard my phone going, so I'll check on. Right, um, but I was reading that thing. But no, um, that poor child. He stood no chance with him. No chance. All right, let's get this. I'll post my um. Well, actually, you can get my email for this site on my YouTube account. That has my email account there. All right. All right let's Right. Has it gone into my system? Hmm. Just checking I've got the right account open, yeah. Oh yeah, I've got it now. <laughs> right. 
all for you. Yeah, I've got them. I've got them, MJ. Right. I think actually this paperwork here that you just sent me is on this Facebook page. Right. Because, um, Oh, no, that's wrong. Never case, isn't it? That's for... Oh, God. I'm getting confused there. So many different cases. But she took a photograph. Why was he blindfolded? And I think the reason all this here, I need to have some type of sound from her, is because she left her daughter in the car, victim two, in the car, while well, she went up to Jesse's. But one muted around 2.40 a.m. You know what I mean? This is very suspicious, all these messages that got off the phone. And then you'll hear it in the um in the court case that I've got here about how she was messaging him, telling him not to talk, not to do this, not to say this. Who was the one who received the orders? I thought it was Bank. It sounds like she's the one in control, not him. Right? Yeah. Katrina Barrett and Jessica Brown's sound claims was were reviewed by law enforcement, including text. Okay. Including well, I've lost it again. Including text and Facebook messaging on February the 13th, 2024, at approximately 9 30 pm. Katrina Barra and Jesse Bang began discuss begin discussing Katrina coming to Jesse's apartment for sex. Jess says that Katrina cannot see victim child one when she gets to the apartment. And the victim child one can be placed in the bathroom while like, oh my god. This is ridiculous. This is so sick. At approximately 10 12 p.m. Katrina sends a message to Jesse and victim child to to sleep in the car. Hmm. Then at approximately 11.45pm, he says victim one will be put in the living room of Katrina and that Katrina is to be quiet walking through. <coughs> <coughs> at 12.39am, on February the 14th, 2024, Jesse asks Katrina to send her a location so he knows when to put victim one, child one, to sleep. How's he going to put the child to sleep? Knock him out. Wouldn't surprise me. They also discuss her stopping at Quick Trip in Manitowoc while on the way. On February the 14th, 2024, Katrina Barra's cell phone arrives into Rivers at approximately 2.27 a.m. There was Facebook messaging between Katrina Barra and Jesse Bank. At 2.35 a.m., Katrina asked Jesse, is there a way to shut off your headlights completely? Why would you need to shut off your headlights? Hmm? Jesse responds, no. And not sit up completely. Katrina message. I can't find victim child's two cell phone, but a cop just passed, so I want to make sure she's good. Victim, oh, I'm going to go back. All right. Victim two is a child for which Katrina Barra is a parent of, and Katrina Barra indicated victim child two is autistic. Good Lord, of course, man. Katrina message, let me find your phone because I need to have some type of sign for her. 
Jesse message probably. She left the six year old autistic child in a car which would be freezing at that time. You know what I mean? A silly. Oh my god, this woman gets sicker. Right now, this. Right? This. Right? Be careful, MG, while you're driving. This is a letter from the mother that the lawyer from the prosecution read out. I have known Katrina Barrett longer than anyone as I am her mother. At this time, I'm asking the court to deny any bond modifi modification for a multiple of reasons. I understand bond is not meant as punishment, but as an assurance to appear. While you have access to some of Katrina's records, there are records in other states, including Nevada and California, you are not seeing. She has contacts in other states that may be willing to assist her, depending on the story she is telling. The story always depends on her audience. Right, now as a mother, this must be hard. You know what I mean? It must be hard. As a mother. Right? At this time, rather than alarming in location, locating yourself, she feels the need to reiterate re re what a good guy Jesse is and is fully defending him and his actions. By aligning with him, she could potentially have access to his extended family and ability to flee the area. Katrina routinely will blame anyone and everyone for what happens without taking responsibility for her own actions. I could believe that. I don't think she's as timid as she makes out. I think she has a side. I don't think it's all Jesse Van. I'm not saying I'm not saying what he did was right. It wasn't. It, was, it totally vile. He shouldn't be allowed out of prison. But I think she's just as bad. Goes without saying she's had one. You read that one. Katrina has no ties to the community. When I asked her why she would go back to yes, she stated, I felt alone. The sweetheart. You need to, people when you need to look at themselves first and learn to love themselves. Once you love yourself, believe me, you will not want a man like that. Right? I can assure you she's well aware of resources available, but she chose, chose not to use them. She severed the, her relationship with me in October 2022, so there is no family in the area. While paper will show a minimum income, there is unaccounted for her income when compared to her spending. I am aware she's, she allowed Jesse to claim her children as dependent on his taxes. Oh, for fuck's sake. And he gave her half of the refund he received for them. I am also aware she received food stamps for child, not in her care. Oh my lord, what is going on with the dog services and people like this here? And I had miscellaneous unclaimed income. Right? In 2016, we resided in CA and my oldest daughter was having heart surgery in this. Could be a while, this is that? 
So I was here with her. At that time, Katrina faced a forced abduction. And had a missing person report filed in CI. She was located in MA, where she was taken in on hold on a hold for erratic behaviour caused by drug use. When the officer drove from WI to get her, she refused to leave. <coughs> Sorry. Stating she was only there by her own free will. The entire abduction was a farce. <coughs> Hold on, let me take it to Everton. Right. The whole abduction was a farce, but does show she has the ability to disappear when she wishes to do so. Katrina has struggled with depression and anxiety for many years. Uh, I suffer with anxiety and all that. I try and go to the shops without having a major anxiety attack. But I don't go around abusing children has a history of erratic behaviour and a long history of drug abuse. She's been in two mental health homes and now suffering from a traumatic brain injury is highly likely to forget mandatory appeal. Oh, don't go down that path, please. She knew what she was doing with those children. I don't feel it is worth the risk to lower her bones, especially as Elijah has not yet been found and many questions are unanswered unanswered. She does need to have need to have need to be held just accountable for what rolls out in the future. And I feel releasing her will be a flight risk. I have been the victim of her verbal and emotional abuse for a very long time. If the court finds any reason to reduce her bail, I would like to be assured of my peace and safety with a court order, no contact, and GPS monitoring. Wow. Wow. That took a lot for a mother to do that. Right. Hang on, hang on, you gotta see this. Alright, alright. Yeah, let if it plays. I don't know if it plays, I don't know. It doesn't but that is her putting her hand, uh, head in her hand when she found out that I wasn't gonna reduce her bail. Oh Lord, you know. All right. Oh, I've read all this. This is I've got all this already. We've been through it all, so I'm not gonna go through all that because right because yes, okay, it's the chronic neglect of a child, but it's all the same. Still got obstructing an officer twice. You know what I mean? It's just that one where it was party to show pt whatever now it's chronic neglect of a child pt i see as a party to a crime which now is chronic right that's the only thing that's changed all this is the same. Listen to this bit then. Approximately February 18th, 436 Jesse Van message came Katrina Barra. I told you to trust me. I'm a mate sure he hates me and be and being here. She responded, Don't want him to hate you. Just Fear you. It's three years old. Jesse responds, it's okay. Someone had to be the bad person. Katrina message, 
I know, but either way, he he can fear you and respect you. Jesse message. He did fear me, but he didn't respect me. Now I'm making him respect me. Hmm. So we've gone through all this bit here. All that. We just read through all that earlier. So I'm not going to read through it again. What's this bit? Uh, hmm. That's what gets me is this bit here. Hold on. Hearing about text and phone. Put him to bed, put him to sleep. Why would you put a child to sleep? You know what I mean? He should be asleep anyway. But you're going to make sure he, you put him to sleep. What with some of the tablets that you take? That would not surprise me. So, but their phones have given a lot of wine. And because of that, this is why they've got that other child, and I was going to cry, because of the second child. How she left her in the car. And it's going to be flipping, freezing outside. So you imagine how cold it's going to be in a car with no heating on. So, imprisonment, which is an incentive to flee. Uh, she also. Uh, I'll play the video of it. Where is it? This is this is this might be it. In the state of Wisconsin versus Katrina Bauer, 24 CF 163. Appearances starting in the courtroom. State appears by Jacqueline Labrie. And on Zoom. Katrina Bauer appears with their attorney, Ann Larson, by Zoom from the Manitowoc County Jail. I'm going to have to stop this. Somewhere along the line, <coughs> I don't know what happened. I've done if I took myself off YouTube or what then, but right, come on. I know he's doing it. I'll keep doing it. This is going to annoy me now because. Uh, Right. Well, let's start this again. Uh, had filed previously a motion to modify bail. And then, um, I think it was late yesterday, filed a motion to dismiss count one. Uh, my understanding after talking with counsel is that uh, Attorney Labrie anticipates filing an amended complaint. And based on that, the parties are asking to adjourn the prelim preliminary hearing uh, one week and proceed with the bail motion today. Attorney LaBrie, is that your understanding as to how we're proceeding? Yes, Judge. And I did file the amended complaint prior to coming to court today. I emailed a copy uh, to Attorney Larson and the court. And Attorney Larson, that's your understanding as to how we're proceeding today? It is, Your Honor. Um, so what the court is going to do then is this, as it relates to the preliminary hearing in light of 
uh, the filings. I'm going to find good cause to toll any applicable time limits. I'll adjourn the preliminary hearing to March 14th at 1030. Judge, we're yeah. going to do that at 11. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we'll do it. We'll we'll adjourn to March 14th at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Attorney Larson. Um, that leaves us with the bail motion then. Attorney Labrie, did you have an opportunity to review the bail motion? Judge, I did have an opportunity to review the bail motion. All right. Attorney Larson, go ahead. Your Honor, um, we are asking that the court reduce the bond to one of a signature. I would note that um, Ms. Bauer is a resident of Wisconsin. She's a lifelong resident of Wisconsin. Um, she has no serious record. She has two prior CMs of dis disorderly conduct and two CTs. She had no misses in the two CMs, which were in, two I believe, 2011 and 2015. Um, in 2017, she had the two CTs I referenced. All, all of these were in Outagamie County, with the exception of the first, which was in Winnebago County. In the 2017 cases, she did miss court. She missed court um, on June 20, 17, CT236. She missed court on June 23rd of 2017. A bench warrant was issued but on, excuse me, on June 21st, but on June 23rd, the bench warrant was not issued. Um, in 17 CT 752, there were several warrants issued. There was one issued on February 5th of 2018. She was an appointed an attorney on February 7th and the warrant was canceled on February 9th. On May 16 of 2018, a bench warrant was issued. On May 23rd, bond was reinstated. On August 14, a bench warrant was issued and on November 15, bond was reinstated. Again, that was in Ottawa County. No cash was ever ordered. Uh, Ms. Bauer did suffer a significant brain injury in 2015. I do not know if that contributed, but that would be my guess. She has um, some difficulty regarding dates and things of that nature. She did have a neuroassessment done. I do not yet have that, but she is receiving SSDI for that condition. As I stated, she's a resident of Wisconsin. She will not leave the state of Wisconsin. She doesn't have anywhere to go outside of Wisconsin. Um, obviously, this is a very high profile case. There's a, a, a lot of um, high emotion going on, but there's also high emotion going on with Ms. Bauer. She's been worried sick, not knowing where her son is. Um, she had been planning on moving back to Two Rivers since the Wisconsin Dells is quite expensive. I don't know what her immediate plan will be, but I would propose that she will attend court hearings with me. She has transportation. She does have the ability to also appear um, at non-evidentiary hearings by Zoom. I further assert she's not a danger to the community. Um, for those reasons, Judge, we are asking that the court amend the bond to one of the signature. Attorney LeBrie. Your Honor, the state is opposed to any modification in bail. As Attorney Larson indicated, the defendant in 2017 had multiple failures to appear for court um, in out of game County in 17 CT 752. She also had that failure to appear in 17 CT 236, as well as the two dis prior disorderly conduct cases. As far as record outside of Wisconsin, um, we don't have any convictions for her, but she does have contacts with law enforcement in 2014 in the state of Nevada, one in March of 2014 and one in April. Again, those weren't convictions, but it does show that she has had contacts outside of the state of Wisconsin. The state feels that the cash bond at this point um, is appropriate. In fact, in light of the amended complaint, I would say it may even be low. We have now changed count one to chronic neglect as party to the crime. 
We have also added the count four, which involves neglect to another child who is six years old from February 14th. So now she's facing additional charges with much higher penalties. Um, these cases obviously involve uh, the care of some very young children. One of the children is around the age of three, the other is around the age of six. And not only were we dealing with the defendant sending the child to uh, Two Rivers for discipline or the boot camp, as they described it, to make that child fearful of the co-actor so that when the child returns to her residence, he would behave better. Um, there is also evidence that on February 14th, she left the six-year-old unattended in a vehicle for approximately an hour in cold weather, um, the temperature around that time was around probably 27 to 30 degrees with the vehicle turned off. Then we have also as part of count one, the chronic neglect on February 16th, leaving the three-year-old unattended for at least an hour as her and the other co-actor are traveling to locations in the city of Manitowoc and neither one of them are seen with the child. Um, it's clear that this defendant is facing some serious charges and there is grave concern. Um, she knows she's facing potential imprisonment, which is an incentive to flee. Uh, she also was encouraging the co-actor not to cooperate with law enforcement on February 20th. Um, she was messaging the co-actor to not say too much. Um, don't, don't let them or no, don't talk. Uh, ask for an attorney, those types of things. I think at this point. So who was in charge of that relationship? She said he was the enforcer of the rules, right? But she's the one telling him what to do in text messages. So point it's clear that cash is warranted i would ask that the cash either remain the same or be increased i don't think a signature bond at all is appropriate based upon the totality of the facts the new charges um, and her past record judge i do know there is one victim who wanted to make a statement regarding bail i don't know um when the court would like to hear that right now okay if you're done I'm done with my argument, Judge. Um, the victim wanted me to read their statement because of concern of reading in front of a courtroom. That's fine. Um, just uh, we'll need the name of the person who you're reading the statement on uh, behalf of. If so, if you give me the name and spell the last name. Okay. The name is Jody J. Now let's just redact that because they can't give it. And the name. statement is: I have known Katrina Bauer longer than anyone else, as I am her mother. At this time, I am asking the court to deny any bond modification for a multitude of reasons. I understand bond is not meant to be a punishment, but as an assurance to appear. While you have access to some of Katrina's records, there are records in other states, including Nevada and California, you are not seeing. She has contacts in other states that may be willing to assist her depending on the story she is telling. Her story always depends on her audience. At this time, rather than aligning in locating her son, she feels the need to reiterate what a good guy Jesse is and is fully defending him and his actions. By aligning with him, she could potentially have access to his extended family and ability to flee the area. Katrina really will blame everyone for what happens without taking responsibility for her actions. It goes without saying she is incapable of making appropriate judgments in everyday life, which is likely being available for future court dates and questioning. Katrina has no ties to the community. When I asked her why she would go back to Jesse, she stated, I felt alone. I can assure you she is well aware of resources available, but she cho chose not to use them. She severed her relationship with me in October of 2022, so there is no family in the area. 
While paper will show minimal income, there's unaccounted for income when compared to her spending. I am aware she allowed Jesse to claim her children as dependents on his taxes, and he gave her half the refund they received. I am also aware she receives food stamps for a child not in her care, miscellaneous unclaimed income. 2016, while she, why we resided in California, and my oldest daughter was having heart surgery in Wisconsin, so I was here with her. At that time, Katrina faked a forced abduction and had missing person reports filed in California. She was located in Minnesota, where she was taking a hold for erratic behavior and drug use. Officers offered to drive her to Wisconsin, and she refused to leave, stating she was there by her own free will. Katrina has struggled with depression and anxiety for many years, um, has a history of erratic behavior. She has been suffering from traumatic brain injury and is highly likely to forget mandatory appearances. I don't feel it's worth the risk to lower her bond, especially as the victim has not been found and many questions are unanswered. She does not, she does need to be held accountable for what rules out in the future. And I feel releasing her, she would be a flight risk. I have been the victim on her verbal and emotional abuse for a very long time. If the court finds any reason to reduce her bail, I would like to be assured of my peace and safety with a court ordered no contact and GPS monitoring. Great. So uh, the court's primary consideration in uh, determining uh, bail is assuring the defendant's appearance in court. Um, quite uh, the amended complaint yet. I don't necessarily know that I need to. Um, there's enough in the complaint uh, that I feel in combination with her current circumstances that bail uh, is set right about where it needs to be. Um, and of primary concern to the court is that uh, based on the allegations in the original complaint, um, you know, her son was missing and she was not being truthful with law enforcement about whether or not she was in the area. That in combination with the fact that she, at least uh, for now, uh, has an address in Wisconsin Dells. Um, I know Attorney Larson makes reference to the fact that, you know, it's the state of Wisconsin and uh, she may have residents an opportunity to reside in Two Rivers. Um, it's certainly going to take more than uh, opportunity in the, uh, the borders of the state uh, to make the court uh, feel assured that she would appear. Um, the behavior that's outlined in the complaint in terms of not being honest with law enforcement as far as her presence goes gives me an incredible amount of concern about uh, whether or not she would in fact uh, make herself available for future court appearances so for those reasons the court will deny the motion to modify bail i'll ask attorney labrie to draft an order to that effect um attorney larson just as a follow-up to the motion though in the event uh uh she has some uh, definite uh, reside um, locally uh, that uh, might accommodate a daily check-in that I'm not saying it would carry the day, but it's certainly something the court would consider and uh, uh, just for the sake of your discussions with your client, okay? Thank you. All right. Anything else for the record on this case, Attorney Labrie? Not on this case, Judge. Uh, Attorney Larson? No. Oh, yeah, thank you. Before we adjourn, then I just want to let uh, uh, the folks generally assembled uh, know I've talked with the district attorney about this so that they can communicate it to the family. They typically don't allow people to wear um, shirts uh, for uh, missing people or alleged victims in the courtroom, uh, especially once we get to the point where uh, Ms. Bowers uh, or Mr. Vang is going to be in person. I have no problem uh, with the fact that people have them. Um, I understand why. And I got Got no problem if you want to cover them up with a jacket, but I typically don't allow uh, those to be worn um, or exposed in the courtroom. It's not the kind of thing I was going to make a big deal about today and have people removed, but I'll let you know going forward. You show up wearing the shirt, um, you'll be shown the door. So, uh, and it's not, it, it's not for any reason other than 
I'm trying to maintain the temperature uh, in the courtroom here and not have people get too excited. So with that, we'll be adjourned on this case. Uh, James, who's next? Mr. Bain. He hasn't got a lawyer yet. Luke, while we're waiting, you had any luck uh, tracking down Mr. Craig? Right. Oh, I've got music still playing in the background. Hold on. That's it. Right, well, <clears throat> nothing much happened with Fang. He hasn't got a lawyer. Don't know why when that woman who is sitting with Je uh, Katrina Barra has said is entitled to their help so why hasn't he got a lawyer with him he'll need one soon anyway so we can go past that on there hold on look at the look on her face look at that look on that face oh yes that is beautiful. But look at that little boy. Look how cute he is. You know what I mean? Oh, this just shows the temperature on the night that she left her daughter in the car. Right? Went right down from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. Right then. Not seeing. Okay. She has contacts in other states that may. Thank you. This is Bang. Don't want to see these ugly much anyway. But she wasn't happy. an incentive to flee. Uh, she also Look, shake her head. was encouraging the co-actor not. Now, this is what sort of like got my back up a bit. This is an area they want to search. Right? The private search group, the community. And so, someone said it's very marshy there. So that like, if they go in a kayak, don't go out the kayak because it will literally suck you in, right? Now listen to this. Look. It says here, I tried, but it was private there, right? Someone said, can it be searched again? Does anyone know if it is public access or private to the kennels? Because there's a kennels around there somewhere. I think that's it, man, there. Right? And someone replied, I tried, but it was private there. Right, and then go long and he's gone. This guy here, Ali Hassime. Right? I live next to the kennels. This is my backyard. We own all the, the way to the river. So there's the kennels. He lives here. Yeah? Someone said, I can fly a drone over it in the morning if someone lives near there that I can take off from. And that's when someone said, go by a kayak, but not get out. All right? You more comments. 
Um, when you come up with a plan, what? You, the, you did come in. Come on, get off. It's private property. That's my backyard. Please, it's marshy or wooded and the water you see, search your property lines again. It's, you know what I mean? Why wouldn't you just say, yeah, you can land, you can come on my, in my backyard. You can take your drone off from there. They only want to search this area. It won't take long. And that's what annoys me when people are like this. They're looking for a three-year-old boy. Right, this is... um. Something to do with Katrina Barra. Some of the pictures, though, are absolutely gorgeous. I feel like bored. All right. Now, what was this one again? Is this of any interest? Let's see. No, I think this was another case. Oh, wasn't it Jessica? Oh, this is one of his older cases, right? That was just one of his old. And this is pictures of people putting like blue lights around the house and things like that. You got a lot of um. Vang stated the victim. Right. Yeah, uh, we know all this information. Now, I've sh actually, right, they're showing the route from where she lives to Vang. I've done that on Google Maps. <coughs> but I also showed the way where you could come down this way. Right? And there's a bridge just here. You can go across to get to his. Right? So, this is another case because this was another toddler that went missing, right? And he was a three-year-old boy, went missing, but he was found. See, that's the route. And that's where she was dropping Elijah off, I suppose, halfway, yeah, there. Then he was taking him all the way back home. And then she'd come back this way. So it takes two and a half hours, two, well, nearly three hours. See, they've got another route there. I did come along this route, and as I said, there is a little bridge here. It takes them a bit further down, I think. Takes you to there. Oh, now I don't know what you lot think about psychics right i'm not one unless i've been verified by the police and things like that i'm not one for psychics now look at this right let's go in a bit closer right now when the psychic does a reading i just write down what they're seeing at the time right you know two hands could have been just being shown two hands right coming to them right salt erosion of vehicle undercarriage auto shop right but hold on, let's go out again. It says here, stuff is coming in, in, like, 
she gets these pictures and references. But I'll get a reference to them on the truck so it would be in a Latin. A truck. If the colour is like a light, lighter, like silver, or actually looks more beige. Now this was before this came out about the car. I don't know what car they used or what the cars look like. It's like as I'm seeing it kind of almost like a brown beige silverish thing. I want to go more towards brown beige the way it comes in and out. Tank maybe. Right? That's so and then someone put I tried to reach out to the psychic sleep on YouTube. I think I I read things I into crying. Anyone can anyone get in touch with that? Now, as I said, I'm not into all this psychic stuff. I'm really not. Now this all this was before this came out. Right? And look at the car. It looks like a silver. It all depends when the light hits it. It can look like a silver colour. And then other times it can look more of a, a tan, a browny, minky colour. Right? So, she's so right there. Oh, what's this one? I'm not sure if this is anything to do with Uh, no. Yeah. Right. These are photos people have took of the area where they've been searching. See, there's another route there. They're all different routes they can take to hers and his. But there is something I want to sit, want to show you. Oh, good. Right. You've got to listen to this. Good Lord in heaven. I take it that this is the so-called boyfriend. Is this, am I looking at the boyfriend here, Jesse Vang? Because look, if I am, I can tell you right now, those aren't glamour shots at the mall. These are shots that go way, way back, and they're all mug shots. Why in the okay. world would a woman pick this guy with mug shots dating back <laughs> for years to, quote, discipline her child? I don't get it. Look at this. <laughs> I, I love Nancy Grace. I really do. Uh, but this is just after the... Facebook page, you know what I mean? You get so okay, there's a lot of pictures and things like that, right? But they're searching so hard for this little boy, searching and searching. Oh, yeah, look at this, right? It's got outside that building where he was last to see. We love you, Elijah, right? And opposite, what do they have? Lake Shore pressure washing and cleaning. You're telling me they're going to wash that pathway off? That's ridiculous. But they've got such a big area to look and search. That is Elijah. I don't care what anyone says. That is Elijah because that's that fire piece of shit. You can going to say the word. Um, another map just saying, oh no, that's another map. 
look at her, look at her. Oh, God, look, zoom out, zoom out. She's not that, oh, I'm innocent, I, I'm, I was misled by him. No, she's the one, just as bad as him. Because she wants to her own little way. She leaves her six-year-old daughter in a car overnight. And then Frank puts a blindfold on her son and puts him in the back so he can't see her. While they go, go up and do what they want to do. Sick. Sick. Right. Anyway, I could be on this all night, but I really don't have that time to be on it all night. That's why I was nearly late coming on my live. Luckily, I've set it all up before. All I had to do was come into the studio, turn the music on, and hit go live. But MG, I might go and watch that later when I finish on here. Anyway, there isn't much more video wise that we haven't, because they're all talking about the court case, you know what I mean? So. It's all about the court case. You know, we've seen that one. I've seen that one as well. And I didn't share that one because some of her points were a bit not right. I'm not saying it isn't good, but there's a few little details not quite correct. So, but it's all about the court case really, these are. So, to be honest with you, well, let me go up here. There isn't much more about Elijah. A a fact, apart from he hasn't been found. Um, the mother isn't talking. Vang isn't talking. He's got no lawyer. But I don't know if by putting pressure on her, the truth will come out because I think she's the one behind it all as well. They're both as bad as each other. Right? She knows she's going to go down. She's going to prison. He knows he's going to prison. But for how long? It all depends. Now, could they put pressure on him and let him say, so, okay, yes, this happened, but she covered it up. You know what I mean? You don't know. Who do they want most? Do they want her or do they want him? That's what it's going to come down to in the end. Who will they make the deal with? In my eyes, they're both the devil. Right? So which one will they pick? Will it be her or will it be him? I think they want him more than they want her. And now would probably drop a lot of these charges if she was to speak and tell the truth. Because this is not going to go away. Not by any means is this going away. So, anyway. I'm going to stop that one because we're going to talk now about... I don't know if there's any new updates, but we'll check. I like to keep updated with this case because this one hits a chord with me. Right, so. Oh, come on. Let 
हैं सब लोग Oh, before I go any further, I will tell you something now. I was watching some on YouTube on my TV. Now, I can't comment when I'm watching on the TV unless I go on my phone. And my phone, I didn't have my phone at hand, so I didn't, couldn't bother. But I watched this YouTuber, can't think of his name now, and he was showing a video of, I believe it was the helicopter going around where um Madeline Soto's body was found and he wasn't zooming in right but it was showing you where the two officers were and just where they was looking you could see this blue object or item of clothing or whatever it was there's was something blue but her body had been hidden by like straw and branches and everything but not that well hidden because you could see this item. It's clear as day, right? And you knew there was something being found because as the police turned round to walk away, A, they had a face mask on, so they don't want to contaminate the area, and B, they was retracing their steps away from the area. So they didn't just walk away all willy-nilly. They actually retrace their steps they took to go in there. They re retrace their steps back out. I thought, oh my god! And I'd love to get. Well, I'm not, I'm not being morbid here, but I don't know if I'd want to see that video. I, I don't think I could share it because it's not right on the family. But then, if the mother knew something, then she's just as bad as he is. Because she could have stopped. This could have been stopped. Anyway, forget about Magdalene Soto for a minute. We're going on to Sebastian. As I said, there's not much news, right? Uh, I do know that the fam, uh, the police were at the family home again, where they were taking photos outside the property, right? Because they're doing the investigation side of it now, they're taking photos. Where before they're doing searches, they were looking for a child that had just walked off. Right? So now they're doing the investigation side. They're now taking the photos. But this should have been done the first time. It shouldn't have just been put down as a, a, a runaway. It shouldn't have been done like that. You should cover all the bases. I once listened to someone in America, who, who worked for the police, or works for the police, and he said, when he goes to a case, he starts off with the worst hypothesis, right? So he looks at a case, and he looks at it, has there been, uh, like, an assault, uh, and a murder, what? And he crosses all that off first, right? And if he can't find anything at a place on that, then he goes on to, wow, uh, did this person just walk away? And that's what they should have done. They should have looked into all this first, looked at the rubbish on the day he went missing. Because the day he went missing, between five and six in the morning, the refuge people come and empty all their bins. So by the time they reported to the police, which was at 8 o'clock in the morning, not half six, quarter seven or anything like that, 8 o'clock. So you could literally say two hours after she found him missing, she reported him to the police. Right? Two hours. Who waits two hours when the child is not in the house and can't be found outside the house? I'd be on that phone as I'm looking around the house. They literally hear me wrecking my house looking for my child. Do you know what I mean? 
They wouldn't have to come in and trash it. I'd be doing it myself. I'd be going through all the cupboards, all the little cubby holes, everything. I'd be going outside, knocking over buckets and all this lot. I'd be doing everything, and they'd hear me on the phone doing it. I wouldn't wait two hours and then phone the police. Right, so anyway, as we all know, they then did the search at the T. And we know... I've been out here in White Plains, Kentucky for about... Right, we know, don't... They won't do their search at a tip because unless they've got probable cause, right? And they have to have probable cause to get the warrant. And they need a warrant to do the search. So they have to have probable cause to do it because it costs too much to do it. So this is about 39 40 seconds okay so we'll watch this so it isn't very long white plains kentucky for about two hours and the search has been going on throughout that time i've seen a couple sumner county vehicles go in and out in dump trucks some of those drivers are telling me that a lot of the regular spots where they drive in through are closed at the moment while this search is ongoing so why are we here this is where the trash from sumner county ends up according to the sumner county sheriff so he got an order earlier this morning a search warrant i should say to search this area this landfill they say right now it's just a precautionary measure to see if they can find any evidence in white plains kentucky adam mincer news two i've been out that, here in white that is not a precautionary measure as i said it costs money they've got to get a warrant to get a warrant they've got a probable cause so you wouldn't go through all that just to say, oh, we're just covering our backs. You know what I mean? You wouldn't. They can't afford to. They've got a probable cause to get a warrant. So, let's see if anyone said anything. Right, these some of the comments they put on here. Weird, I've never heard of a landfill search done as a precautionary. No. Only when they were ticked off. But the parents, like I'm saying, I've been saying, isn't it obvious? Well, I'd say it's obvious about the uh, stepfather. I hope he isn't. I hope he is just gone up somewhere. But it's not looking like that. Right? Yeah, the boy disappeared without a trace. Why did it take so long before they suspected foul play? Right? I think they suspected foul play early on. Early on. Right, I really do. But I think they had to go through the procedure of making sure he hadn't just been picked, say, a car been come by and picked him up. You know what I mean? They had to make sure, they had to do all those checks first. Yeah, this one. I, I noticed that. But then I thought, she's probably on about the Sunday morning. It's gone. If he was gone when she woke up, at, woke up, woke, woke him up at 6am, how was he laughing and joking that morning, as she said? They have combed over that for a day. You know what I mean? I think they may be on about the Sunday morning. He was laughing and joking. I'm not sure, but it's just a bit weird. I did pick up on that. Right? But if I, I can't, I'll, I don't, I don't know, do you, um, this is the same. The search for a missing teenager leads investigators to a massive landfill across state lines. No one has seen 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers in a week and a half. Crews spent last week. 
Hold on, I'll be right back. That was my door showing up on my phone. Hold on. Sorry to someone inquiring about someone who lives next door who doesn't live no next door. They've moved out. They've gone. <laughs> and anyway, let's continue. Week scouring the area around his Hendersonville home before suspending the search to focus on the investigation. That investigation led them to Hopkins County Regional Landfill in Kentucky. Why? Here's news to Sarah Smith. When the sun went down, investigators left to prepare for day two of the search here. This is where the trash from Sebastian's neighborhood in Shackle Island ends up. Sumner County deputies say Sebastian's parents claim he left home around midnight Monday, February 26th, just hours before sources say the trash was picked up there. Crews have stopped at almost nothing to find the teen. We've seen helicopters, horses, ATVs, as well as police going door to door near his neighborhood, searching. Still no sign of Sebastian. Earlier this week, TBI says they've scaled back the search to focus more on the investigation part of this. Deputies not saying exactly what led them here to this landfill. Investigators say his parents have been cooperating. His hometown is a tight-knit community shaken by his disappearance. In White Plains, Kentucky, Sarah Smith, News 2. Uh, oh, I'm done. I've got this one here. Sebastian Rogers, a 15-year-old in Sumner County, has been missing now since February 26. The massive search for him is taking a turn as the Kentucky landfill is now being investigated. Peyton County is live from TBI headquarters with an update on the search and the national interest in this case. And Nikki, according to the Sumner County Sheriff's Office, that landfill, which is in White Plains, Kentucky, is where the trash from Sebastian's neighborhood in the beach area of Henderson, Hendersonville went on the day that he went missing. Now, the TBI says no specific information or leads took them to that landfill besides what I just mentioned, but this is more of a precautionary measure. The sheriff's office says this is happening to eliminate possible options and questions. But unfortunately, there are still more questions than answers since Sebastian was reported missing almost two weeks ago now, I spoke with a podcaster who focuses on sharing the details of missing persons cases in the South for some perspective on how these cases ripple through communities and beyond. Here's what she has learned from her experiences. I think it's just really important to keep an open mind when you're tuned in to social media and these Facebook groups, watching YouTube creators. Um, I think sticking to the facts about what law enforcement has released, what we know to be factual information is very important and encouraging people to continue to share out the flyers and the factual information and asking people, hey, if you see something, say something. There are two new billboards up with Sebastian's information. They're up in the Nashville area, one by the Rivergate Mall, another along I-65, headed to Nashville from Hendersonville. Now, both of these average a total of about 330 views per day, and they are sponsored by people who want to bring Sebastian home. Live in Nashville, Peyton Kennedy, News 2. All right. Hold on. Sebastian Ross. Now, Duchess, as you just saw, I'm there. She's good. I 
no, I haven't seen any of Trevor's for a day or so. Um, as I said, I'll go over later and I'll catch up on it all. While I'm doing stuff, my stuff myself, I listen to other YouTubers. That's why I have it on my TV, so I can watch it on my TV, but I do what I need to do on my laptop. So... No, um... They don't... This is not a precautionary thing. It's not a good sign. It's not a good sign when they say they're scaling back the search. It's not. Okay, I will. You get my um all in all about hairs on the back of my neck up because you know you know it's gonna be good. You know <laughs> I need to watch it. Right. Um, so it's not a precautionary measure. As I said, they have to have a probable cause to get the warrant to go and search. So did someone come up? Because it's a bit weird. Like this first interview they did went out on, I believe it was Sunday night. Sunday or Monday. Oh, something like that. But after that interview, so it had to be the Sunday that interview went out. Because it was on the Monday, they turned round and said they're scaling back the search. And now looking more on the investigative side of it. So, I don't know. Um, so, something must have, when they did that interview, something must have picked up on them. They must have picked up on something. And as I said, you just seen the one little dog. One little dog she has. They're quite uh yappy. They can be little yappy little flippers. So if someone had got up during the night, those dogs are gonna yap away. When dogs see a movement they oh oh what's going on? I know, I've, I've grown up with dogs. I don't have dogs no more. I've got cats. They're just a bag. They're worse than dogs. <laughs> but no, they don't have, do that in a precautionary. You don't. As that one woman put in the uh, message, first she's ever heard of them doing something like this as a precautionary. So, um, mm -hmm. There isn't anything new, really. Nothing new else has come through. But I'll have another look. But I don't think there is. The search for oh, a missing God. teenager leads in. Right. Mm. Yeah, we just watched that. I think I just watched that. Yeah. So it's all about the uh, search in the um, landfill. That's all I like, about. There's no new updates. And I, I must admit, I didn't go to bed till about 2 a.m. this morning. And I got up quite late. I say about quarter past 10 normal time for me because of my medication. Just knocks me out. And um, I sat here for about an, an hour. Two hours maybe. I did not want to turn. I didn't even have it on my TV. I had something else on my TV this morning. I didn't want to turn on YouTube and find any bad information. I didn't want it because I don't want to hear that. I want to hear that he's been found. He is safe. You know what I mean? But I don't think we're going to hear that. So it's it's hard and it's sad, but this is hitting me right in the heart because, as I said, I've got a grandson who's on the spectrum, and when you think of autism, it does it isn't the same for every child. Each child is different. So one mother could say, "Oh, my son's got autism." Also, is mine. It's not as if they can. 
comparing notes. Well, I do this with my son because of that. You know what I mean? It's not like that. You can't compare notes with autism because every child is different. You know, he's supposed to be high functioning. But I think he's a lot cleverer than they think. They, I think, to be honest with you, the stepfather, by not letting him use the internet, right, as I said before, he goes to school, he's got a couple of friends at school, it's hard, even when they're in a special education needs class, it's still hard for them to make friends, right? My grandson, who I have on the weekends, don't have him this weekend, but he's got one real good friend. He's got two, but one is really close to, right? Clicks with him. They don't fight, they don't argue, you know what I mean? And my other grandson, he's got one or two friends, or three, well, he's got quite a few friends, more than what Ellis has, because that grandson, my other grandson is more like, my one grandson is so uh, full on, right? Full on. And even my, my other grandson is scared of him a bit because he's so full on. He's, he's the way he, he moves himself around is so fast and, and he's bulky as well. And you've got, it's like having a, Ryan Russell come charging at you down the hallway. It really is because he can knock you flying. He really can. And it scares my other grandson because he's not used to that. Right? But, um, so each child is different. Oh, God. What's MG saying? So in an interview with the port and it, he says he was able to see a video of Sebastian. He said, if no one told you Sebastian was your autistic, you wouldn't know. No, you wouldn't. It's like years ago, years, I'll go back to when I was a child. And I'm going back a long time now, girls and boys. A long time. Right? I would guarantee you if that, if autism was so well known, talked about then, there'd be a lot more children when I was growing up with autism. But it wasn't looked on like that. They just looked on as being lazy. Because if you're quiet and you're tired, like some autistic children get tired very quickly, right? So they've been called lazy. Or they've been called a bully. Right? They weren't. They weren't. So, and then it's only in, what the past, my son's now 30 something, I'd say in the past 30 years, maybe, autism has started to come more and more to the uh, front. And this is why a lot of children now are getting this help they need but they're not getting it soon enough and i feel sorry for those who who suffered all those years in school suffered they went through hell in school because of this because they wasn't diagnosed as having autism the how the parents went through because they couldn't control their child oh your child's just being naughty controlling but you can't do that with an autistic child if your child's having a meltdown you just gotta let that child go let him have that meltdown on the floor make sure he's safe but let him have that meltdown because you can't stop that but when i was growing up if a child did that oh god look at that child being naughty on the floor there look at that child screaming and shouting and Right? Pulling things off the shelves in the shops and things like that. That's what parents went through when I was growing up. 
All right? So you can't... It all changed. And some children, as I said, if you... And MG just said, if you look at them, you wouldn't know they're autistic. You really wouldn't. I've known autistic children go through school, right? Come out with high results, high marks, gone to college or gone to uni. Because they've got the support team there to help them get through it. 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, they didn't have, I went on, oh, oh, okay, say so 50 years ago, they didn't have anything like that for children. They didn't. And it's like, I'm going off subject a bit here, but it's like people who are schizophrenic, right? Oh, they was just sent to a loopy house, a mental home, right? In the white jacket and towed away. Now, the help they can get when they aren't cut back, but there's help there if they can get it. Well, they're not being sent off in white jackets and uh, what are them jacket things where they tie you up in your straight jackets. Well, that's how they were treated when I was a child. Because they didn't have anything to schizophrenic or all this lot. It was just, oh God, that person's mental. Knock him up or lock her up, you know what I mean? And that was before any of all this stuff about drugs hit the streets. You know what I mean? I didn't know what drugs was until I was about... Hmm. I think I was in my maybe late 20s, early 30s, before drugs really hit home at me. Well, I didn't hit home, but where I started to see more of it come to light. So, with the right help, an autistic child and the support, you would not know they are autistic. You wouldn't. Because some... Some show the traits, some don't, right? One of the traits of an autistic child, I don't know why, and it's walking on the toes. Now, a lot of parents say, oh, but my daughter does that. She's a baby, but she walks on her toes. But it's hard to say when the baby's little if that's a trait or not. So you have to wait until they're about four, five, when they start walking properly, in proper shoes or trainers or whatever, to notice that trait because when they are little, they walk on their toes, you know what I mean? So you have to wait till they're a certain age before you can start. Well, they shouldn't be doing that now. You should be walking. You know what my sister used to do, my daughter used to do? It wasn't cruel. They'd be walking down the street, her and her partner, and they'd be holding their little boy's hand. And every time he went up on his toes, you know what they did? They just stopped walking. They stopped walking. So then he put his feet back down flat on the floor. They'd start walking again. He'd start walking again. As soon as he went up on his toes, they'd stop. Put his feet back down on the floor. Start walking again. And now, he don't do it that much now. He hardly ever goes up on his toes. I've not noticed it, but I go down there about down to my daughter's down where she lives in Scotland. About I try to get down there every three months, but just lately, the past couple of years, it's been hard for me to get down there so often. And um, but when I see him, he's not walking on his toes as much, and you just gotta have the patience with him to stop. Let him make sure his feet are flat on the floor and start walking again. Some parents don't have the patience with the children. I was walking on his toes, carry on. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll get there somehow, but, so carry on. But you can't, you've got to take your time. So, as I said, if the right support, an autistic child can have a normal life. My one grandson who I see every couple of months, 
he's in a mainstream school, right? In a mainstream class with other children who are not autistic, right? But he has the support there in that class because he still struggles, so he does have support there. My other grandson is in a mainstream school, but is in uh, a same class. Right, which are for, I mean, there's only five or six boys, and they're all boys, five or six boys in his class. Right, so um, that's how he goes to school, and he loves it at school now. My, my, my one grandson hated school, hated nursery, and that nursery was, was horrible, horrible. And wait for him to get out of there. But now he's in this special SEN class and he's getting the help and the support he needs. He's coming along in leaps and bounds. He loves school. He's the only child I've ever known who, when you say, Oh, Ellis, you can't go to school today because you've got this infection or this, he cries. He hates not going to school. Because it breaks his routine, that's his routine to go to school. So an autistic child is more likely to have a hundred percent attendance than an, an average child, child. You know, you know what I mean? Because you find out, oh, you're not going to school. You got to go, oh, that's good, mum. I can stay at home. An autistic child, no, they like that routine, so they're going to want to go to school. So I know how it. Uh, education because they're not losing time from school so that is good too you can there are a lot of people who are autistic and you wouldn't know to look at them you wouldn't know so it's hard but i can't some of them must have gone seriously wrong in that household but like i heard apparently The father, the bio father, was going for custody, full custody. You know, if that's the case, right, and I, can, I believe that, right, because when they did their interview, the stepfather made out, like, oh, everything's so sweet and everything will just fall in between me and the mother and the father. You know what I mean? But when the father spoke, when you asked him anything about the, his ex-wife and her partner, this, right? No, he didn't want to talk about that. You've got a completely different vibe off him. So that, I believe that father. So they asked him, how do you feel about your son getting out of the house? And he said, I don't want to talk about that. So he's not happy. He's not happy that apparently his son got out of that house. Because his son should never have got out of that house. Right? You can have... Like, I used to have to take my kids out my front door when my, when my, my kids were little. Because my son would sleepwalk. And I always used to lock my door and then leave my door, my key in the door at a twisted angle so that no one could push my key out the door. And so then no one could get anything else in the door that at the other side. But I couldn't do that. I had to take the keys out the door. Because if I left my keys in the door, the chances is my son's sleepwalking, he could possibly, not that he did, but he could possibly open the door and wander out the house. So... How did a child get out of a house if it's locked up? If you've got an autistic child, you're going to make a lot more precautions on your front doors. Right? And I don't even know if they've got a doorbell, a door camera. Because if they do, if they had a doorbell, door camera thing, 
as soon as he walked out that door, it would set the uh, phone off. It would send a notification to the phone that someone is by the door, has gone out the door, or is coming into the door. How do I know that? Because I used to work and I'd go to people's houses and one day I got there and no one was in. Right? And now he's seen me on his camera, on his phone. So his, oh, oh, his wife saw me and she's messaged me saying, telling me where to find the keys. Right? I thought, okay, you've seen me. Okay, so they know when someone's coming up to the door, even before I hit the door, they knew I was there. So, whereas the one I've got, they have to ring the doorbell for it to activate on my phone. But if they've got a ring doorbell, then it will be activated on their phone. I wonder if they have got one. That's a question to ask, isn't it? Have they got a ring doorbell? If I had a house, if I lived in a house, oh yeah, I'd have a ring doorbell. I'd have it so that as soon as I stepped on my property, it would go off. Before they even reach my front door, it would be coming up on my phone. You know what I mean? So, I wonder if they had one. No one's ever said anything about that. Everyone's been on about the neighbours ring doorbells and everything like that. But did they not have a ring doorbell or a security camera on the outside of the house? You know what? I'm going to have a look again tomorrow. I'm not going to have a look now tonight. But tomorrow I'm going to go on that street and I'm going to go around that back part of the house. But then again, if it's around the back by the garages, it's not going to catch him, isn't it? Because he went out the front door. But surely they would have had a ring doorbell. I'm sure they would have had a ring doorbell. So, anyway, I have been on here one hour, 50 minutes. There's no more new updates on Elijah, uh, Sebastian, no. We've gone through that. We've seen that one. These are all old ones now. Yeah. I might even, you know, on this one here, can you see? Yeah, I'm here. Shall I put a comment on? Does someone know if they had a ring doorbell? Where's my question mark? Oh, I can't run the question mark. Right. right. Does anyone know if they had the ring doorbell? Because if they did, as I said, it would have set it off on the phone if he walked out that door. And like I said, you're in a nice area, they've got nice houses, you're not going to have no security on your house. So somewhere on the house, I believe, we've got a a video for round by the garageway, or they've got a ring doorbell. I heard the parents putting a ring doorbell, right? Not so that it can be used. It's so that they put it up near the ceiling, facing down, right? Into a child's bedroom, right? So the men, if that child Try to walk out, get out the bedroom, or come out the bedroom, it would set the phone off. So then the parents would wake up and go, oh my God, he's getting up out of bed, he's getting out of the room, we've got to get him back in his room, you know what I mean? Or even have one at the bottom of the stairs so it sets it off as they come down the stairs. So I've heard the people doing things like that. But no, that has got me now. I'm going to have to 
work on that now. See if the wires are ring doorbell. So anyway, as I said, there's no more new updates on Sebastian. Only way I was hoping there would be, but there isn't. I will put all the phone numbers for Elijah in the description and for Sebastian in the description. Hold right. on. I've got the phone numbers here. I'll run it along the bottom. This is for Sebastian. If anyone has any information on this child, anything, contact these numbers. You've got phone numbers, you've got emails, and you can do it anonymously. So say it was a neighbour. It's got some information on it, on the family. They could do it anonymously. It can all be done anonymously. We need to find this boy. Because like I said last night, unless if <clears throat> unless he uh, gave wings and flew away when he left that property, there's no way he left that property without A, coming out and walking across the grass to the car, grey car, right? Or B, being carried out. And if he'd done the first one where he'd come out the door and they arranged to meet up with someone and they said, yeah, we can pick you up. And they picked them up. They'd have caught the car on that house, which I pointed out yesterday, where they had the video recorder. Right? And that camera was pointing down onto their driveway and onto the road. So that would have picked up any cars that was coming around during the night. You know what I mean? Any cars that literally just come up the road and literally two minutes later come out again, it would have picked up them cars. But there's been nothing. Nothing. So that didn't happen. So how did he leave that house without once coming off the property? Once he left that property, how did he do that without leaving a scent? Please, someone tell me, because this is my head. I don't want to believe what I think, what is going on in my head, to be true. I don't want to believe that. I want there to be a happy ending here. But it's not looking that way. So, put this one up. This is why I was talking about how children with autism, you wouldn't know. Because it's easy. And I'm going to go and watch that interview after. It's on... I don't know what site, what one it is. If MG can get back to me and tell me. If she knows what site it was on, then I can go and look for it and find it. And everyone else can go and look for it and find it. Right? But you wouldn't believe some kids with autism. You wouldn't. You could walk around the corner to the shops or to the park and you just... Now, I'll tell you something. My grandson, one weekend, it was last year, it was in the summertime, we'd been to the park, and he met up with these two kids, a girl and a boy, brother and sister, and he got on with them like a house on fire, brilliantly. So I wasn't so stressed, I could relax a little bit, because I knew he'd found someone he could play with, and he wouldn't be getting into any bother, right? You know, I didn't realise the daughter, oh, right, to be honest with you, I didn't realise the son, the boy and the girl, and both got diagnosis of autism and ADHD. I didn't know, because he couldn't tell. All oh, right, MG's having a look to find out. Well, if anyone wants to see it, it was live on, um, if you know Treadtone, go on YouTube, 
Don't sit on. And it was live on there. Was it on YouTube or his Facebook, MG? I don't think I've got his Facebook. I'm going to have to find his Facebook. But it's on Thread Time. So go on YouTube, type in Thread Time, and you'll find him. He's only a young lad, but he's all for the children. He's totally awful slime. It was because of Dread that I found out about Sebastian. Right? Because I was watching Trev this on that Monday, I found out about, or on the Sunday, something like, on the Monday, that I found out about Sebastian. So, um, he's really good. He's up on all the cases as well. And so are a few other YouTubers up on these cases. So, have a look around. Go on YouTube. You can find some really good YouTubers on here. Without all the kill tackling on there. But some of them are watching the guy just to have a little giggle to myself. You know what I mean? Because I can't believe what they're saying about others. I mean, oh God. But, you know what I mean? They use it as a, at their platform just to chat about everyone else. <laughs> and I have to giggle. I, I watch it. I don't think, why am I watching this? And I think sometimes it's because I just need that bit of laughter in my life. <laughs> but anyway, go to Trev Time and you will find an interview from last night with a guy called uh, Nick. Okay? So please go and find Trev Time and look for that live laugh from last night. If not, I will... If you can't find it, just leave me a message on Twitter if you're watching on Twitter. Or leave, leave me a message on YouTube. And I'll find it myself and I will go through it with you. Okay? Tomorrow. But hopefully, well, not hopefully, I'm, because it won't be finished. Even if they, even if, I don't want to say this, I don't want to, these words I don't want to come out of my mouth. But, if it's not good news one day, you can't say, well, at least that's over with. No, it's not. Because then we want to know why and who. Because there's no reason for doing anything like that. No reason. Right? Now, if it's true that the biofather was going for custody, perhaps that was putting a bit of strain on you. Perhaps the mother was saying, well, this is all your fault, you know what I mean? That his father's going for custody because the way you treat him or whatever. We don't know. But that could have been putting a strain on the marriage. Like it said, one of his neighbours was reported to have said that uh, the situation with Sebastian was putting a strain on their marriage. Now we know why. Now we know why. And yes, it is fifth. Fifth marriage. Oh my God, is he trying to outbeat, what's her name? Liz Taylor, Elizabeth Taylor. YouTube, it's on YouTube. Find Trev Time on YouTube and you'll find the live that he did last night with Nick in it, okay? It's really good, Trevor is, Trev is. As I said, he's only a young lad but he's so focused on the children and the information he finds. I'm thinking, Lord, where are you getting all this information from? I have a lot of trouble getting a lot of information. And thank you, MG, for that information. She's emailed me what the paperwork, right, which I've not been able to get. Because I'm in the UK, I get restricted to a lot of information. So it's really hard. So thank you, MG, for that. So I'm going to download that off my download it off my emails onto my laptop, so I can read through that. And maybe we can do a live one night and go through it. Right? Because what's it about? Who's it about again? Oh. 
Oh, it's about um, that ever vile creature. I don't know how I'm going to say them words come out of my mouth, but that's Stephen um, Stern, um, Stern's. I, I can't even get the words out of my mouth because to me he's just vile. Just vile. But we'll talk, we can talk about that. MG says yes. So, okay, we can do that tomorrow night. Oh, I'm just going to be. Yeah. I've got some on Elijah. I've got some paperwork on Elijah. I was able to get that one. I wasn't able to get the one on Maggie, which you've got me. And to be honest, I don't know if there's any paperwork on Sebastian yet. We don't know. But if the time comes, I'll call call on you MG for that. If I can't get it myself, I'll go, MG. Because in the UK, I, I'm restricted. I really am. So I'm going to say, because it is now, well, oh, it's only two, two minutes past. I've only been on here 78, 89. Just over two hours. I've only been on here just over two hours tonight. So... I'm going to call it a night because I need to get something sorted out. And my cats are moaning. So I've got to sort them out. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Oh, oh, yes, please, MG. Yes. Yes, I'd love them. Oh, that would be something to talk about. How long has that been going on now? 17, 17, 18, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, it's Saturday tomorrow, isn't it? You know, I'm meant to check my phone to see if it's Saturday to tomorrow. This is sad. This is so sad that I'm meant to check my phone. Yes, it's Saturday tomorrow. <laughs> so, yes, I will be... I'll be on tomorrow because I haven't got my grandsons with me. Either of my grandkids with me tomorrow. So... Oh God, I'm gonna get this off. Right, so oh, I just took that down. So thank you everyone for being here and good night. Oh I'm gonna find the picture of one.